The fundamental reason why bioinformatics has increased in importance is because of the increasing amount of DNA sequence data that has been made available in the last couple of decades. And this has been possible through a revolution in sequencing techniques. Traditionally, when the Human Genome Project started in the mid-90s, or early 90s even, the methods such as um, Sanger sequence was used. Here the whole idea is that you start um, generating sequences that are terminated at different positions, and then you can identify these termination protocols, and then you separate the different DNA generated strands on by size. And this enabled quite long reads. You can get this DNA piece up to maybe even 1000 base pairs. And, but it was slow because you needed to amplify the, pro, the, the DNA and you needed to, and it was beginning you run on gel, but then after with flesh and probes, you can, you can run it on uh, capillary electrophoresis and do it more efficiently. But still, it was still quite slow and expensive because of reagents. So this is the idea of second sequencing. You have a uh, template, you have a primer, and the, the primer stops at different sizes, and then you have different primers that are stopped at ATGOC, and then you run, then you just purify all these and run it and see that you have the shortest one here, that's only C, so the first one is a C, the second one is stopped at G, and the third at a T, and the third at a fourth at T, and the fifth at A, so you can get the sequence. The problem is, of course, the longer you get, this, the difference in size can be more, relatively smaller, it will be harder to get it, hard to purify it. But, as I said, it works well, but it's, it requires quite a lot of reagents, so that's why it's expensive. Uh, the second generation sequencing, or the next generation sequencing, like 12x4x4 by by four and uh, other methods, like in uh, prior sequencing, here the idea is that you basically could, you could use um, uh, some microbeads or something to uh, purify, to amplify DNA much more efficiently. And then you can do it in parallel, you can have flow cells, you can divide things in different clusters, and you can do all this processing in clusters, being, making the whole separation or application much smaller. <coughs> and um, uh, the process is much, much cheaper. The third generation that is coming now in the last few years is basically the idea is to do it at a single cell level. So you can, for instance, do flow and fresh and cells, you amplify a single DNA strand, and you can then measure directly once it's created. You can measure the fresh and the, the current or something that it takes what nucleotides are made of. So you can do it, you can basically sequence very long um, stretches of DNA on a single molecule level. And so it's you know, much, much smaller levels of <coughs> material makes it much cheaper. So traditionally, when you know, started, the idea was that you have the DNA, you extract it, you fragment it, you clone into vectors, you put it in bacteria and grow and isolate the vector DNAs and you sequence its libraries and then you try to put it together in, in fragments together. <coughs> However, already in, during the Human Genome Project, it was realized that it's much more efficient to do, do a shortcut sequencing. So you basically use you randomize your DNA and sequence parts of it together. And particularly, what if you do things like you do purify shotguns, so randomized parts of DNA, or not randomized, but randomized cut of DNA, that are of a quite standardized length, and you sequence the beginning and end of it, you can use this very much for efficient assembly of the genomes. As I said, the major, major um, revolution of the old techniques has come to the major cost. So this is the cost of since 2001, the cost of sequence one human genome. In 2001, it was about 100 million dollars, and uh, now today it's less than 1,000. And this has been two major falls. It was dropping exponentially, even in the beginning, just by the techniques. Then in about 2007, the next generation sequencing machines arrived and it dropped away much, much faster than the speed of computers. And then actually in 2015, recently, with the arrival of third generation sequences, it has dropped another exponential speed again. So today, sequencing of genomes is not only used for determining the sequence of the genome, but also many other things like studying expression analysis by doing sequence of RNA, the mRNAs, search for mutations, you can sequence the exomes, you can see DNAs, you can do me uh, uh, metagenomics, which is actually sequencing not a single organism, but a, 
uh, um, whole um, ecology of organisms. You can, for instance, sequence all the bacteria in the gut or in the, in the mouth or in the soil or, or something like that. And in addition, there are a lot of other techniques like heap sequence and so on that are used in using sequencing to study other phenomena in biology. So today, it's actually important to remember that sequencing is actually often much, much cheaper than anything else you can do in the lab. So if you can transform a problem into to something that's based on sequencing of the DNA or RNA, that is certainly going to be the most cost-effective way of studying your problem.